the six. Then uh, in 14, in the yellow and black for France, the first of two Frenchmen. And this is uh, Goelabre. And he's partnered by, well, partners. No, they're against each other, Baptiste Gros. But the man we're all going to watch here is Petter Nortug. Now, Anders Glorsen, who wears 17, and Petter Nortug, who wears four. Just hiding back a little bit. Look at the focus, the concentration. David, he means business. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting, Mike, to see the difference between last week and this week. He used an awful lot of strength in his racing last week, and he certainly isn't the finished article based on what we saw last week. But look at that. He's the wise man here. He knows he doesn't want to lead it, and I love that. He didn't even attempt to uh, get into that top three, four. So, as usual, Nortug analyzes the best line, the best effort, how to manage the effort that you're going to put out from the qualifying to this, the quarter, to the semi, and then he'll be hoping the final. But, of course, what he's doing, Mike, is to rely on his pace to come through the field remember look at them at the moment they spread right across this eight meter wide track so he can't do anything at the moment he's got to wait yeah he, he knows that he knows he just has to play the patient game he'll be playing around with his own little attacks now and again in fact he's attacking already after 50 seconds well the door opened didn't it and he said thank you very much he couldn't resist and he did the right thing because he wasn't expecting that, he just looked around, and now he's doing an Ustagov. He is, a, a very similar. They've got the same mindset, haven't they? I mean, I'm surprised that he wanted to go to the front now. He'll slow it down, but oh. it, they don't want it slow. The rest of the pack don't want this slow. I thought that was an invitation, in which, he, which was impossible to refuse. Well, he would, uh, there he is, playing a little again. So he lets uh, Anders Glerson uh, move forward. Maybe he just wanted his... Uh, Norwegian mate to come through and <laughs> to do the donkey work. This is the new part of the track and you can see the fast descent there, David. You need to get the good, the right race line and that's on the inside, but going wide there, I think that was Yilai. It is. Closest to the camera, Yilai in blue wanting to uh, move up the pack. Glerson, who had one success in the World Cup sprints uh, last season, and that was uh, altitude at Davos. It was the Again, it was the first freestyle sprint of the season last year. Uh, the freestyle sprint coming that much earlier in the programme. First two through, and chasing them now, it's Theodore Pedersen. Don't write him off the Swede. Theodore Pedersen, the fourth best sprinter of last season. And the title was won by Haderstad, but uh, in fact he's been fourth in the World Cup sprint rankings for the past two years, Theodore Pedersen. Nortug knows full well, David, that now this is the, the important part of the race. I still think second position or third position is best at this stage, but he wants a clear line around this corner. He's not going to get it. Well, no, it's the uh, Frenchman, the one of the two Frenchmen, Baptiste Grohl, who has uh, gone for <laughs> home. Now, Grohl has to make this decisive because... Uh, as they come up here, remember they're going to swing right-handed down and round before they swing left-handed into the finishing straight. Here they are, and he's really opened up. And he had that clearly in his mind of exactly what he wanted to do back to these girl. And he's really moved ahead, and this is exciting to see a Frenchman working like this. But now, that effort being swamped now by Petr Nortug, who looks left and right as they come in and a comfortable victory in the end for Nortug, ahead of Baptiste Gros, whose tactics paid off, because that's 320.6, he's only 1-100th behind Petr Nortug. Well, and, and this heat, David, um, just for two hundredths of a second faster than the previous one, and Nortug, uh, for me, looking uh, in outstanding form, his strategies are all back, he's playing around with the the pacing, annoying some of the other athletes maybe with that pace changing. But uh, what a turn of pace from Baptiste Gros. Well, that's what sprinting is all about, isn't it? Having that extra gear when it matters most. He went rather earlier than we expected, but he used the climb here to raise the tempo. 
What and apart team? from Petr Norto, he had the rest beaten. Destroyed, and, and he backed off as well as Norto did towards the lines, conserving the energy, realizing he was going to get through in the top two. 320.55 for Usman.